presented by Memphis Shades, the clear choice for custom windshields and fairings for your motorcycle. And wild ass seats, stay in the saddle longer and in total comfort no matter your butt or budget. That's Brittany. She knew what she was getting herself into, Dave. Yeah. Can you just measure it and tell us how big how big of a gap it is? <laughs> it's hard I, to tell from this angle you said. So I just <laughs> record at the right time, too. I'm out. I'm leaving. I'm done I'm for out. today. Man, that shouldn't take very much at all. <laughs> if that all is that that's all it takes to get you out, we can tell you to measure every week. Jesus Christ. <laughs> we were having a nice, pleasant conversation before you joined, Ryan, you know? You you say that every week, Dave. I, mm. I feel like it's a you know, there's a common thread there. <laughs> I tell you what, that little bastard groundhog did us all a solid. Well, it did you guys a solid for sure? We'll see how solid <laughs> that little motherfucker does for us. Well, speaking of little bastards, uh, I, got a, I just got a text from Tiny Cox that he's uh, <laughs> his Wi-Fi and his phone's not working. Oh, okay. How did he text me? Well, he, you, you don't need Wi-Fi for a text message. He shoved the tin foil in his ass and got up on the roof and mm -hmm. did spread eagle. Tell you one thing, he's <laughs> not texting. <laughs> yeah. Tell you one thing, he's not texting from, and that's one of those fucking Google phones. That's for sure. Those things need a strong to very strong signal to even work. So, Dustin, I'm going to ask you a question. Maybe I don't know if you can give us some inside information, or you don't know, or. Don't know. Maybe you just don't want to answer. Shoot. I got a question for you. So I keep hearing a, a bunch of not, you know, people are complaining about the new infotainment system system that's in the new 24s. Okay. And what they're saying is that it's iOS only, only works on Apple CarPlay, and it doesn't work with whatever the hell Google is calling their amalgamation of stuff. Is it is it a pro? Do you know if is it a problem with the the head unit or is it just the fact that Google killed that stuff last year or a year and a half ago or whenever and and people just aren't supporting it? I don't know. I I had heard I that, have no answer. I had heard that it was Google that Google killed the the their support for um, the stuff that was being used on motorcycles. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's just you know, anytime you talk tech and with this community, half the time you you don't know what right. what words you're getting because they're all like extrapolating stuff about right. stuff they don't know. I did hear something quite interesting though that came from one of our one of our patrons and good friends, and I'm not going to call him out, um, but I, but I am going to I am going to say what I heard from him. That rumor has it is that the CVO Street Glide, so well, so. There was a question pose of whether or not anybody thought that the street glide was going to be in an ST version, because right now it's only a road glide. And what I've been hearing is the answer to that question is no, because the CVO street glide right now is getting a death wobble, and they think it has to do with the air, the change in the aerodynamics of that um, fairing is causing the front end to wiggle at high speeds. You know, I heard a few... Just the other day, where did I hear that? I, I heard the same thing. That it might have been. It was posted in our Discord. So mm, um, could be. But but it's so um, by by the person who I heard it from. But he had he had texted me separately. I heard that. But um, th they said, from what I understand, and and I think this might have come from his dealer. He also mentioned that that is why. Um, there's been speed limiters put on these new bikes is because of the death wobble with that particular model. I thought all Harleys had speed limiters on them. Well, but particularly the particularly the CVO and then not moving that new fairing design into the ST was because of this uh, particular wobbling situation at it, high speeds. Is he sure it's not because they were trying to get Android car shit to work and be beating on the <laughs> fairing while they were riding at the same time? No, I that could give no, you a wobble. It could. I mean, it could give you a wobble, but from what I understand, this is directly related to the uh, fairing design versus speed. So, which is puzzling because Harley claims that both models were wind tunnel tested. Two inches. Anyways, how do these are new <laughs> models? How do they even know if this shit is happening? It's a micro That's gap. What I want to know. 
How do they? Well, I mean, these new models, Brittany, would have had to have been tested. They don't just make new shit and not put it out there and test it. No, I agree with that. But how does the general public know that there's a problem with them? Well, they've been available for been... a week and a half. Well, People and the, have been and able the, to buy them for a week and a half. And these frames, or not the frames, but yeah, the, the redesign of the body style and the fairings have been out for over a year already. But do you, do you think? Because they, they put mean, this out in the CVO models last year. Yeah, but they they would have road tested this stuff. I mean, I, I guess it's you know, it, if it's true, if someone was on it and it started wobbling, what speed were they going? Well, you're right; they would have tested it, but but obviously, people are buying these all over America in variety of conditions and wind and and elevations and that kind of thing. That Harley maybe wouldn't have had an opportunity. You know, I believe that their testing grounds are in Arizona, from what I understand. So um, while they would have had some elevations and maybe, you know, some winds, they wouldn't have had every condition that the bikes would be encountering right now. now they ought to be testing them in every region because yeah. you're going to have variable everything. I, right. I, mean, I, I, I agree with you, but I, I don't know what they're I don't know what they're doing. I just know that they're in their engineers are low. There's a there's a grouping of engineers that do redesigns that are located in Arizona. And they do a lot of track testing and testing with new models and new bikes and stuff in Arizona. Yeah, but they'd also be doing wind tunnel testing and stuff like all all vehicles, you know, for, under different conditions sure. and all Absolutely, that, so. yeah, because, I mean, they're a huge corporation. They'd be under serious liability, right? I mean, it didn't, it didn't stop them from jacking those dinas out like they were nobody's business with death wobbles they knew existed. <laughs> <laughs> it still probably do. <laughs> exactly, it still probably do. So, I mean, you know. I mean, this there's got to be a testing facility track place or whatever in Wisconsin somewhere. That's this is HQ. all yeah. this is all speculation. Yeah. It's not anything that's confirmed. It's just what I've been what, what I've heard. Well, like I said, I heard the same thing. I don't recall where. Maybe it was the same source, or maybe it was a separate source. I don't know. Or maybe it's just a rumor going around the internet. Maybe, maybe so. We'll all wait so, for recall emails coming through the deal. <laughs> <laughs> right. Is that why they don't have the the ST version out yet? That's what I had heard. That's that's the speculation was that's why the ST was not released in the road glide and street glide was because of that very. Well, reason. then maybe the issues mm -hmm. with the model they haven't released and not with the existing CVOs, you know. Well, I, I, the what I had heard was it was coming from the existing CVOs, but this hmm. could all be wrong, wrong information. I'm just, yeah, I'm just trying to fuel a fire, man. I'm trying to get people fired yeah. up about it. Get don't get sue us. And, don't sue us. We're not trying to start a rumor. That's right. We're just trying to perpetuate. Well, I'm that. for sure trying to start a rumor. I'm just not. <laughs> I'm just not quantifying that it's fact. <laughs> That's what you get. Ryan's uh, artificial intelligence is kicking in. That's right. Speaking of artificial intelligence, what do you got for us tonight, Dave? Oh, I thought we would. Uh, I thought we'd play a little game. Uh, what are we going to with artificial intelligence? Or yeah, or are the, we? Uh, or what kind of game are we playing? Like hide the sausage kind of game or artificial intelligence? Yeah. That's what. That's no, FTBM twenty four, right? No, they, ha they haven't put the AIs in the dolls yet. <laughs> oh, okay. You got. You got to wait. That's you, still that's, another year or so. You find away. out about that after retirement, do you? Yeah, talk to you about that. I later. tell you what, this AI stuff is moving fast, and it's scaring me. You know, it, it's funny you say that, and everybody. I, and I hear a lot of people saying that, but AI has been around a long time. I mean, I, I remember I took my first course and wrote my first program in, like, I think it was 91, you know, when they yeah, were mean, really pushing AI. It's just that it's really jumped, it's you know. It's available last, everywhere for everything. That yeah. is AI is too. used in all kinds of stuff. It's just we never think about it or realize it. Yeah. I mean... Like Dave said, it's been around forever. You just don't realize that it's there. It's just people like to whip up the FUD. Something new we don't understand. But I whip thought up, we'd have a little fun with budge. it. Man. Okay, let's have some fun with yeah. it. Yeah, let's go. You know, the uh, four of the five dirty bikers, should have been five, but somebody's got a problem with their interwebs, uh, versus chat GPT. Okay. So real intel intelligence what, versus artificial intelligence. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't, I don't know if I'd say we're real intelligence, but uh, maybe it's half intelligence against artificial intelligence. Okay. We try. Um, we try. Why don't we go with that? So I went out on Chat GPT 
that platform, I, I've actually used a free account. So okay. the data set and everything that it's using is uh, from, I think, 2022. Okay. <clears throat> so about a year, year old. And I asked it a couple of questions. The first question was, what is the best touring motorcycle and why? Okay. What, what did the data tell us, Dave? What did well, Skynet tell us, Linda Hamilton? <laughs> well, did you, uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, first off, I, you know, again, AI is only as good as what you put in and, you know, how you, how you word the stuff. So mm -hmm. I made a little bit, I made a mistake because what I was really interested in were just cruisers. Okay. Right. It, it didn't occur to me because I'm not an adventure bike guy that, the AI would include adventure bikes, which which it absolutely did. And what it uh, said, first acknowledging that there are you know, a lot of different you know, factors, but according to chat GPT 2022, uh -huh. first one listed is the BMW R1250 GS. So a GS1250 basically, right? Yeah, adventure. Okay. Okay. Um, and it said that that particular model offers a comfortable ride, advanced technology, and excellent off-road capabilities. So Not obviously, obviously this version of AI is gay. <laughs> um, <laughs> that or, I, or maybe I didn't say as a straight man. Oh, okay. You know, I mean, you've got, just, you've got, you've got to pose the question right, right? Yeah, you've got to I, pose exactly. the question right. I'm just kidding out there. Yeah. This this version of AI obviously does like to ride to coffee, though. That is that is a, a case in point. That is it, fact. Well, as do a lot of uh, real intelligent things. <laughs> that, so the second one I think it had, differ. <laughs> the second one it had was the Honda Goldwing. Okay. You know, and they and it says that's renowned for its luxury touring features, mm -hmm. and the Goldwing provides a smooth and powerful ride with ample storage space and comfort features. Sounds like this baby is being paid by Honda. Um, <laughs> when, when was the Goldwing announced? When did it announce? When did Honda announce that the Goldwing line was being discontinued? Was that in 22 or 23? Do we remember? Does anyone remember? Wasn't it? I thought year? it was in 22. I, I thought it's been a hot minute since the Goldwing. Was well, but even, we even if it was on the floor, yeah, even if it was in 22, okay. it's still, I mean, it's still there, right? It's still right. out there. Yeah, and we, and I didn't, again, it's only going to give you what you asked for. What I didn't say in. currently sure. available. Currently on the market available. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Okay. They Next. have a 24 on the website. You're 24. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Take it. So then the third bike it had listed was the Harley Davidson. And this is this one got me. What what would you expect the best if you're gonna only list one Harley in the top five? Which one would you guys list as the best touring bike? Ultra. Yeah, yeah some some ultra. ultra. Some version of an ultra road glide ultra, street guide ultra, mm. some ultra. Okay. Um, no, you're wrong. Huh. It is the Harley Davidson Electra Glide. Well, piss on this thing. This AI is already proven to be stupid. So <laughs> I'm like, dude, I didn't say like 1971 or a lot of artificial, not a lot of intelligence. Yeah, but it says it's a classic choice among touring enthusiasts. The Electra Glide is known for its iconic style. I'll give it that. Powerful engine and a range of touring specific features. Yeah, you get a lot of them in on trade. I mean, and in, in, yeah, I mean, all of those things were true in two thousand and four. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, in the day, well, I shouldn't say much. PJ has one, um, you know, and he loves that thing. Your son has an Electra Glide. Yeah. He doesn't go over eighty. He doesn't go over sixty-five miles an hour. I don't think he rides, but he's got an electric glide <laughs> and a Dyna. Uh, I don't. I don't know that he's ridden since we went uh, out to the Badlands. No shit. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Maybe maybe around town a little bit, but no, he's he's got a little one he's caring for now, so he's off there the bike go. for for there quite some time. Okay. Yeah. So that's that's three, and then the fourth one, and I know nothing about this bike whatsoever. 
is the Yamaha FJR 1300. Again, a sport touring bike combines performance and comfort, making it a popular choice for riders who enjoy both spirited riding and long distance touring. Oh yeah, mm. I've I've been on one of these. You guys ever uh, had any experience with those? This is going to be a. It's going to look like a sport bike, but it's a little bit bigger, and it has those kind of very. Uh, rounded clamshell style bags mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um and and the riding position is more sport bike you're except you're upright but your legs are going to be behind and 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 uh kind of like a gs or the pan pan america your legs are going to be a little bit more behind you than they are going to be they're not going to be in front of you if that makes sense so i have seen one of these i've never ridden one um i've seen them they honestly do look like they would be quite comfortable for a long, a long haul. Um, and I believe the last time we were on a huge road trip, we saw one of these motherfuckers in a dealership in a Harley dealership. In fact, that was brought in on trade. Hmm. We had one at one time last year. Smooth ride. Smooth ride. Smooth ride. I mean, just like any Honda. It's What's smooth, that? Smooth ride. It, I don't know. Does anyone in the discord, have you heard anyone mention that they've got one? I have not heard if anybody has one. I've, and I've not, I've, I haven't even seen any pictures of anybody having one, but that doesn't mean it's yeah. not true. Yeah. I don't know. Sounds like it'd be a fun bike to check out. Okay. And what was the last one on the list? The last one was uh, Kawasaki Concours 14. <laughs> Offering a blend of sporty performance and touring comfort, the Concours 14 is favored for its powerful engine and practical features. You could do voiceover work, Dave. I think you've missed your retirement calling. <laughs> <laughs> that was a pretty good read on it. Uh, I, I'm looking this one up, too, because I'm not familiar with it. It looks kind of like a sport bike as well. Yeah, yeah. it's got that FJR-esque styling. Yep. yep. So Smooth ride. It's fugly, though. Yeah, what's the what's the uh, other Kawasaki touring bike uh, that they have? Um, I don't. I can look. Try to anyways. Let's Kawasaki see. has a bigger like one that has a. Um, they have one that has a frame mounted fairing. I thought. Yeah, it's a so the Vulcan is like their. I don't. They have different versions, I guess. So they have a bagger. Yeah, what's the and then what's they the have a touring? It's called a Vulcan 1700 Voyager. That's the Voyager. One. Okay, that's the one I was thinking of. Is the Voyager? I'm surprised that this one, this one makes it on there before the Voyager does. Well, the, the, Voy the, the Vaquero too, or the yeah, they have a Vaquero. Yeah, the the. Uh, but like Dave said, it's it is interesting because if you don't preface what type of motorcycle, it gives you all these. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? A variety. Yeah. But I, mean, this, I feel this, the same way. Like I would personally, I like cruisers. So I would go in and look at all the different cruisers and figure out which one's the most practical and comfortable. But this yeah, concourse, right I mean, this concourse looks, looks fun. Hmm. Am I crazy? You're not it crazy. It's like a sport bike to me. Yeah. So yeah. I don't know. It's yeah. the leg position, Dave. That yeah. one, that's what I wouldn't be able to get around is that leg, that that funky behind my yeah. behind my knee leg position. Yeah, I've, I have that problem. Um, but I, I try to not to judge bikes based on the fact that my hips don't work. I, I think it's really funny that cramped. you pose you pose this question to the AI, and then the AI throws throws us a loop and and tries to get out of the to get out of answering it, and says ultimately the best touring motorcycle for you depends on your individual preferences, budget, and intended use. So this this AI well, just throws wrong. in a disclaimer at the end. This motherfucker it well, won't it just stand by its own episode. answers. <laughs> no, but it's, but it's, it's like true, Felicity, everybody. Yeah, it is true. <laughs> it's true. But what I did find interesting, though, is when I told it to take out, because then I went back and said, okay, so do not include adventure bikes. Okay. So it came back and said, okay, we'll exclude the adventure bikes. And it basically came back with uh, Yeah, it only four. took out the BMW. It only yeah. took out the BMW. And so left it's, it's all still, the other. still rating the Goldwing Electra Glide, mm -hmm. the FJR 1300, and the Concours 14. Okay. So would right. you guys, I mean, I, I don't, 
Okay, so here's my only problem with that list is that the FJR 1300 and the Concourse are basically the same bike, right? So I would have liked to have seen Kawasaki, the Vaquero, or the Voyager, one of the other Kawasaki touring motorcycles in place of the sport touring motorcycle because I think it's more a more traditional, traditional touring bike as opposed to sport touring. But that's my... Because honestly, yeah. Kawasaki's Kawasaki's are strong motorcycles. They mm-hmm. they they make a good bike. They run a long time. They they don't require a lot of service. Um, you know, for 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 price point, you get a lot of bike for not very expensive price. Um, you know, but unfortunately, it is also a Kawasaki. So, well, you know, the other thing that I was thinking about as I was kind of digesting what it came back with was. Um, Again, you know, you, you have to be specific about what you want feedback on. Um, maybe our view of what a touring bike is or what touring is, um, is not uni- the universal standard now. Well, maybe not even going that far, but just our idea of touring is different than someone else's idea of touring. I mean... I- the downfall, I don't know if downfall is the right word, but all four of us, we, I mean, we all ride cruisers and that seems to be our preference when we choose a motorcycle. So I don't know what, you know what I mean? Like we're almost blind to those other options because it's just not what we prefer. Well, to, be fair, to be fair, these two actually do have touring bikes. Right. For sure. But, but... I, I, I agree with you, Brittany, because I know I'm absolutely guilty of that. And I, I have said it, right? My preference is for Harley Davidson motorcycles. So in that case, I am a bit blind to other brands because I don't know, even if somebody gave me a pile of money right now, I'm not going to go to a Kawasaki or a Yamaha or a BMW dealer and look at one of those bikes. If somebody gives me a pile of money right now, I'm going directly to the Harley Davidson dealership and buying a road glide ST. Right. <laughs> CBO ST. Right. right. So, I mean, it, right. I mean, it, so, so for me, you're, you're, you're absolutely on point. I'm, I'm blind to, what the other ones have to offer. I would only say again, for me, I wouldn't rule out a gold wing for, for absolutely for sure. But I, I don't know the Yamaha FJR, the contours would be something I would even look at simply because of a riding position that I don't know would be comfortable for me over a long period of time. Yeah. yeah. And I think even with that, I mean, if you look at sport touring, which, which I get right. And like an LRST, that's a sport tour that kind of fits with the type of touring that I like to do. I'm not doing any fucking off-road or adventure touring. That's for sure. So right. when people talk about, you know, a touring bike, those bikes never even pop into my mind. And, and yeah. I think, I think the idea of that off-road or adventure touring, like if you think about it, like a GS 1250, those, uh, one of those bikes fully packed down is bigger and heavier than our bikes, Dave, by far. So, oh, yeah. yeah. So I don't know that I would be doing any off-roading on one of those by besides like driving it into a campsite. I'm not taking one of those off-road. It tips over, I'll never get it up. And I'm talking about the bike. Yeah. Not the other thing. Yeah, exactly. Could you use the other thing to help get the bike up? Mm-hmm. Likely not. <laughs> okay. Just asking. Yeah. I mean, it's a fair question, but I'm just saying, likely. Yeah, no, I mean, I just, you know, this really made me kind of think through a lot of stuff as I was, you know, kind of sure. going through. I did go back and just ask it flat out. Why are you not including the road glide and the street glide? And I was impressed because the first thing it did was apologize. <laughs> I saw that. That's See? hilarious. That's a motherfucker. The, the chat GPT has manners. <laughs> she said, my apologies for the oversight. The Harley Davidson Road Glide and Street Glide are indeed excellent touring motorcycles, and they are widely popular in the touring category. And then it kind of went on to give, give an overview, overview of, each, of uh, each one. Yeah. 
Well, which had, what did it say? Harley Davidson Road Glide, the best Harley Davidson ever made, is known <laughs> no, for its distinctive shark nose fairing. The uh, Road Glide provides a stable and comfortable ride. It's often favored for its unique styling, wind protection, and touring oriented features. Hmm. And we don't care what it said about Street Glide. <laughs> <laughs> Different fairing style is basically what it says, but okay. Yeah. So I don't know. I mean, what do you guys well, think? Is I, that, I think it's uh, interesting because then it puts, again, it puts a caveat at the end. Both the Road Glide and Street Glide from Harley Davidson offer strong performance, comfortable ergonomics, and a range of features tailored for long distance touring. Riders often choose between these models based on their preferred design, riding dynamics, specific features that match their touring needs. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, yeah I, I think I think the AI was interesting because it seems like the more specific you pose the question, the the more it's going to drill down to an answer that you may or may not agree with. But I, I do think it was funny when you asked for those specifically. It was like, oh, yes, these are also excellent touring motorcycles. We have left them off the list, however. Yeah. <laughs> That's fair, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's a fair, fair, I mean, I fair could, assessment. Yeah. I don't know, guys. What do you guys think out in listener land? Do you disagree with these uh, five? We'll, we'll include the BMW R1250 just because it's there. I will, I will have to say, though, in my uh, trips that I've been riding, um, I have run into a GS1250 twice Um on the road both times the rider was so low not riding in a group and both times the bike was heavily packed down and the person yep. was on the road for a multiple day cross-country road trip so um that, that, and i actually stopped at a gas station and talked to one of the guys because i was filling up and he pulled up next to me because the gas station was filled with cars and he was like can i just jump on the pump right after you he completely budged in front of all the other cars that were there <laughs> So what you call was, sloppy seconds. That's right. Which he, you know, <laughs> jumped, jumped right in and, you know, inserted. Yeah. I kind of regret I didn't rent the BMW when I was in South Africa, but I just, you know, I, I would, I didn't want to take the risk of that being my first experience on that type of a bike on that trip. Sure. You know, and sure. you know, with all my luck, I'd fall and break a hip. Right. That would not be good on a vacation. Would not have been good. Would not have been good. So what was the last question you posed to this AI motherfucker? So I ask it a question that has been a topic of discussion for probably the last couple of years. Sure. Um, and one that I don't agree with. And I just wanted to see if it was going to kind of fall into the same trap that everybody else seems to be falling into. So I pose the question, why are younger people not buying Harley Davidson? And it uh, actually Define came back to young some stuff. What, what age group are well, we looking at here? Again, okay, didn't define that by age group. Um, I kind of wanted to see what it, what it was going to come back with because I actually don't think age group's the big issue that Harley has. But... Um, it came back with some, you know, I think probably what you would expect, right? First thing being high cost. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, HDs are often perceived as premium, which is the goal, and come with a higher price tag compared to some other motorcycle brands. Younger consumers, particularly those in the early stages of their career, may find these bikes to be relatively expensive. Correct. Yeah, and we've talked about that lots, like you yep. said. Because yep. entry point for Harley is up there. Yep. 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 Okay. And what then we did can. It, what did it say next? Uh, changing preferences, which I do agree with. Younger generations often have different preferences when it comes to transportation and leisure activities. Some may prefer smaller and more fuel efficient motorcycles, or may be interested in alternative forms of transportation, such as electric scooters or bicycles. And I can definitely see that. Huh. Electric right? scooters or bicycles. Those were the suggested alternate forms. As a leisure activity, yes. Yeah. Or 
or transportation in an urban area. I mean, yeah. is motorcycling still like niche enough that people just not everybody wants to go out on a motorcycle for leisure? You know what I mean? Well, I I think this is anyway, my my no, my answer has to do with cultural shifts, but never mind. I'm just going to let this one be. I think this is <clears throat> I I I have a different differing opinion of this, this changing preferences thing. I think it's because there there is a prevailing notion out there i think for when you talk about changing preferences that you know motorcycling is for gen xers and boomers and not a young person's you know not for a younger person uh to to be doing no but but i think it i mean again i'm i'm looking if if i if you look at like urban areas mm -hmm. right over, we've never had the the choices in alternatives to things like motorcycles at that level that we've had in like the last 15, 20 years. Sure. With all the e-bikes and the scooters and, and all this stuff. I mean, there's just a lot of options out there other than getting even a little 125, right? To run around, commute back and forth on a short hop to work or around the city. There's just a lot more uh, options out there at that point in the market. You know what I mean? But yeah, well, and I never, I guess I have never looked at because of where I probably a big reason is because of where I live. I've never looked at my motorcycle and thought this would be a good form of transportation. I've always thought of it more as a leisure activity um, just because I can't ride, you know, I can only ride five months out of the year. Right. So transportation is never at the top of my list for owning a motorcycle. I mean, here you have to think about, you know, having a good running car long before you think about a motorcycle. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I hadn't really thought about that, but growing up in the Midwest, I, I imagine it's kind of similar there, whether you think about it or not, you're going to have another vehicle because you have winter and you're just not going to be on a motorcycle when the roads are icy and you yep. know, you get a foot of snow. Um, or you have a family. Yep. yep. Yeah. But it is kind of interesting and it's, you know, what's interesting about the question is you can't, you almost can't look at one factor individually because they all play together. Um, Cause it's like, I don't even know how to answer it with just like one or two bullet points, you know, cause it is really high cost. So that's gonna deter you from having a preference for this type of activity in leisure. Cause you can't afford it. So why would you even bother looking at it? And then I don't know. It is kind of interesting. Brittany, now, you're obviously, you're the youngest of all of us. L let me ask you this question because I, I think it holds some relevance here. Um, you just, you said something that spoke to a, a reality, but does that mean that you're, that, that younger people don't dream? Because you just said something that would just like hit me like a ton of bricks. Why even bother looking at it if I can't afford it? You well, know what I mean? Where yeah. my generation, we, we, we were fucking window shoppers, man. You know, you walked by a car dealership and there was a Corvette in the window and you went in and, and you took a look at it and you, you kicked the tires and smelled the paint and sat down in it if they let you, but you were window shopping, you were dreaming. Yeah, I don't. Oh, just, this is the window shopping these, these days. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. I don't have a okay. good answer that. for that because, like, part of that's just my personality type. Um, so, as an example, when I was what sixteen, when you can get your license, um, I personally I knew that my parents were not getting me a vehicle, and I didn't have the money to get a vehicle. So. I guess in my mind, I wasn't going to get my hopes up that I would have one. So I just didn't even bother with it. I just kind of put it off to the to the side of my mind. But I, like you said, I'm sure not everybody approaches it that way. Well, that's that's part of becoming an adult, right? I mean, we all we all hopefully, right, know that know the difference between what we want and what we can have. Yeah, I mean, you if know, you ask moment. me five years later and I had money, then my answer is going to change. Right. Yeah. But I, I honestly don't think it's really age is the, the driving factor. It's really around economics. I mean, I know a lot of young people that drive BMWs. You Cars. Know? Yeah. I mean, their well, age. Yeah. And know, those aren't exactly cheap. They're not cheap. Vehicles. Well, you know, now granted some of them have the three series because the three series is kind of the, 
get into the the BMW brand. Isn't a BMW just a poor man's Mercedes? Come on. Oh, no, man. I do like <laughs> young, BMW. young man's. Young man's. Oh, young man. Okay. But, you know, Sorry. but again, it's, you know, the not, and, and I, well, actually, I'll, I'll save that because we're going to get into economic factors. But anyway, so the, the next thing besides, so we had high cost, changing preferences, and cultural shifts. This Brian, one seems... I know, sorry, Brittany, I you want to take that? You no, it. go ahead and read it. So I want to say something and then I'll read it. This one, to me, seems maybe equally as impactful as the cost. Because when I think about this question, I immediately go to, okay, well, I didn't grow up around motorcycles. And I think in at least some cultures, maybe in the U.S., I'm not sure if it's everywhere, if it's just where I grew up. But there could still be this view that motorcycling is dangerous. And so, you know, you're not encouraged to look at that when you're younger. Um, But let me read this. So it says cultural shifts, the cultural significance of motorcycles, particularly heavyweight cruisers like those produced by Harley Davidson, has shifted over time. Younger generations may not identify as strongly with the traditional image associated with Harley Davidson's. I, I think it stopped short because I honestly, I, I, I agree with the cultural shifts. I honestly don't think it's restricted to the bikes. I think it's restricted to the community that they see. Yeah. The types I of people, right? The behavior. And I think, more I think of them are staying of indoors and not going out. So they're not getting exposed to that much culture these days. Right. I saw right. Per- perfect scenario. And I saw this today and it blew my mind. Some guy made a reel. And he asked AI, which which is fitting to today's topic. He right. asked AI, what what was it like having a childhood in an image growing up? And he started from the late 1800s. So you had kids playing all the way up until the 90s. You had kids playing outside. When you got to the 2010s, uh, every kid is looking at a phone in the image that AI did. And then it even went beyond to like 2050. And it gets worse. The kids have sure. VR headsets on, apocalypse behind them, and they're still looking at their devices. Right. Yep. And it's sad to say, as as bad as this is getting, the parents are just as guilty as the kids are. Oh, right? definitely. There's there's a lot of people of that shit that on had. the younger generation saying they don't want to do this and that, but who's raising them? Yeah, and I've met plenty of parents where it was so much easier for them to use a screen for their kid to entertain them than anything else. Mm-hmm. And and that's probably not their intention, you know. They're, they're not trying to just create a child that's behind a screen. Well, it, it's but irresponsible, the, the, absolutely irresponsible. Because when I, when I had a kid, I doped that kid up on Tylenol to put him to sleep. I, I didn't <laughs> I was put him in front of the TV. That was going. <laughs> Dave was just dumping Benadryl down his throat, just drink Rub this and go take a nap. On their gums. Shame these parents these days. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, and do you, okay, so, so it's interesting to me that the younger generation seem to be, seem to be quote unquote, less judgmental and more accepting, right? However, however, they still seem to see a motorcyclist and think that dirty biker is a criminal and a gangster, right? It, there, there, there is this thing, this image, you know, because because it, it specifically says that they they may not identify with the traditional image associated with Harley Davidson motorcycles, right? So they're okay with looking at somebody who is completely non-binary, he, she, they, them, whatever it might be, and be completely accepting of that, but see a guy clad in in leather and a beard and make an assumption about that person that is highly likely that it's not true. Well, they're, they're making assumptions based on what the, on the exposure that they've had to that, which to Dustin's point is no exposure. Yeah. Let me, let me tell you something that happened today was just on the news two hours ago out here in Woodbridge or wherever Prince William Parkway or, or somewhere, a biker and a guy in a truck started getting into it, driving down the road. Okay. They hit a stoplight. Guess what the biker does? Kick the car. Wait, window or windshield. Gets off no. the fucking bike and charges the truck. Oh, shit. For real? And then a gun is is pulled. By and the a biker. Round, and a round goes off. Hmm. 
and shoots a van on the other side of the road. Thank God, because there was a shopping center on the other side of that van. Okay. Right. And all they talked about now, who do you think pulled the gun? Well, the probably the, the guy in the truck. That's probably who pulled it. Yeah. The guy in the truck pulled the gun. Right. Cause the guy, cause he was threatened by the, by the biker. He was, but the biker shitless. jumped in and took the gun away. And they did. They did say he set it down on the ground, set on the curb by by the handgun, waited for the cops. Okay, you know, but but these, you know, people hear these stories, right? Like, like you know, my wife was going on about, oh my god, I can't believe the guy had a gun. I'm like, I can't believe the dumbass got off the fucking bike. Okay, why, why do you why do yep. you do that? Right. Okay, so here's another one for you, Dave. That supports what you're just saying. Do you all know who Ian Ziering is? No. Ian Ziering was one of the original actors in the original 90210 television series. Was he the blonde-headed kid? Blonde-headed guy, yeah. Oh, the one that okay. got beat up with the mini bike people? Hold on, Dave. I'm sorry. <laughs> Hold on, Dave. I'm sorry. <laughs> so if you read the title of the article, it says, Ian Ziering attacked Bikers. by motorcycle gang. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's that's what it says, okay? Yeah. And then you watch. So I was like, holy shit, what happened? Then you watch the video and it's a bunch of fucking punks on yeah. mini bikes. On mini bikes, yeah. <laughs> that stopped in the intersection, Ian Ziering, and whatever transpired, you don't really hear what they say or whatever happens. But there's a fight, and these guys in these mini bikes, you know, jump off their mini bikes as much as you can jump off a mini bike, as, as you can just step over it. And, and, and they just go over and start fighting him. And he like runs into the, the some front of some store. But the title of the article that was printed was yep. Ian Ziering attacked by motorcycle gang. Yeah, I, I saw I saw one where they said he was attacked by bikers. Yeah, a biker gang. Yeah. That's what it was. A biker gang. Yeah. OK, biker gang. I'm sorry, but nowhere in anybody's vernacular are little mini bikes considered a biker gang were they little people on the mini bikes <laughs> I, I didn't see the video were they like much or... they were not they, they were not from well, the that's why tony's not here he's I, out attacking ian ziering right yeah, now yeah tony, <laughs> tony's, tony's out getting bailed out of jail for attacking ian ziering <laughs> tony's out on his mini bike <laughs> on his grom right? what, what's the zip code over in louisville yeah He's gonna make a new show that's hilarious but no <laughs> but, but I, I mean you know when when this is what you see in the media this is what people are exposed to. They they right. jump to assumptions, but you know, is it is it the media's fault or is it the behavior of the people? Well, you know, it perpetuates it. Right. It's it's yeah. one it's one represents all, right? Yeah. So yeah. one biker gets off his bike and does that. Never mind the forty seven people that got out of their cars today and oh, yeah. did the same thing on a road somewhere. Right. Yep. But that's not making the news everywhere because they want to make sure they continue to cultivate the image that all of us bikers are criminals and, and gang members. Yeah. I mean, that's the that's the reality. Right. And it doesn't matter if you look like me or or if you look like Brittany, we're all still criminals and gang members. Brittany's just <laughs> from a just from, you know, I mean, a different gang. Yeah. Well, straight thug. The time that I <laughs> ran out of gas in like out in the countryside and I pulled off into someone's driveway and went up to their door and this woman looked like she was terrified of me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you just met me on the street, I'm not overly intimidating. I don't know. First time you walked up to me at FDBM and demanded to be put on my comms unit, I was a little intimidated. I got to tell you. All right. Well, I'll keep working on being intimidating. Yeah. But <laughs> I mean, I just... I had good luck, Brittany. Where's that big? Dick I don't shirt remember if I had jeans on or what, but <laughs> mm -hmm. I just had a helmet on and I had my vest on. It was summertime, but I mean, it's not like I walked up to the door, you know, swinging a bat or something. It's probably those razor fucking blade earrings you wear. I don't with the, know with the hooks that. <laughs> jump I don't out even at know you. if I had them in or not, but <laughs> it's just it well, is the Elizabeth Taylor impalers. Yeah. The Elizabeth Taylor and Paler. <laughs> All right. So the next one, and we, we kind of touched, I think, started to touch on this. when We were talking about preferences and stuff, but diverse options. I think it was like I was saying, right? There's so much more out there now. So the motorcycle, it's a, the motorcycle market has become more diverse with various manufacturers offering a wide range of models to cater to different preferences. Mm -hmm. 
younger consumers explore other brands that align more, cl- and this is, this is key, more closely to their personal tastes. And this is why I, I, I think we, uh, they overplay the, the price point that Harley's at. Sure. I mean, I'm, Harley's at the price point it wants to be for the brand image it wants. And there's a, there's a, a market segment out there, regardless of their age, that's attracted to that. Mm-hmm. Right. Because of that brand image and, and what it has to offer. Sure. I, I yeah, the diverse options. I, I still think I still think it's an I think it's an image issue. That's what I think it is. I think that there is a long standing image issue of what it means to wear a Harley shirt, to wear a leather vest, to ride a Harley Davidson. If 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 those are all of the you know, the criteria for being a biker that that doesn't that doesn't resonate with younger people. So rather than taking the time to make an, uh, you know, make an effort to cultivate their own image within that community, they just skip that all together and go to the BMW GS 1250 where they can ride to Starbucks. And I, and I don't, I don't know. It's just, I mean, I know you're, you're, you know, you're focusing on the image, but a lot of it comes down to, you know, what, what, what are they offering in the product line? You know, younger people, I think most younger people and people who are youthful in their old age, right. you know, embrace technology, technical evolution, you know, um, do you think the technology is what's driving, driving them away? Because I think what's attractive to me what I where I think Harley has the edge over everybody else is the community and the people surrounding the motorcycles more so than the motorcycles. Well, I think that's true. But if, if you're looking for a bike, right, mm-hmm. and you're not, and let's put that put that aside. We're talking about products offering here, okay, and diversity in a product line. Okay, if you're looking for a vehicle. Yeah, you know, you want a vehicle that matches your modern lifestyle. You know, and that that includes a fucking head unit that can connect to a Bluetooth device, you know, Mm. which has been a challenge for Harley. You know, being able to run the latest technology that integrates with the rest of the stuff while you, you know, so that you have it available while you're traveling. That's important to a lot of people. And I think until recently, hopefully what we're seeing now with 24s is Harley has been listening and is doing something. The problem is on the technology side, I mean, you're talking about what a five year R and D cycle, right? So if you don't if you don't stay up to date with product with the with the uh, market demand, you get like Harley was five years ago. I think though, uh, riding a motorcycle is visceral, Dave. It's a lot more analog than it is digital, and and I think that that's I think that's what Harley's been struggling with more than anything is how do you integrate the digital world with something that you're doing that's more analog than anything. Right. I mean, the 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 VIN V twin internal combustion engine has been relatively unchanged for 60 years. Right. We've had iterations. We've had advancements in air fuel mix ratios and that kind of stuff. But let's be honest, that motor has been virtually unchanged in in terms of an internal combustion engine, air cooled internal combustion engine for more than 60 years. Okay, so which is very analog. It's a very analog experience riding a motorcycle. It's visceral. It's a feeling. It's a, it's a, you know, wind in your face, bug in your teeth kind of scenario. And how do you integrate that into the digital world where like Dustin's saying many young people, it's too hard for them. They don't experience that. They've never experienced getting hit in the face with a June bug and not had to go cry to mommy about how bad it hurt. There's something else I think, plays a part in this whole thing too is you got a brand that catered more to the blue collar folk 60 years ago like you were saying even 40 30 years ago okay and now it's almost like they're changing demographics they're pricing out the blue collar people and this is only going to be a white collar brand in another 10 years that's kind of going against harley's original image and what it was for 100 years yeah well you're not wrong i mean it's changed you know, it, it, it was a, you know, it was a motorcycle brand that has been, you know, headquartered in the upper Midwest of the United States for since its inception. Right. Mm-hmm. One of the most blue collar cities in America. Yep. So, you know, but you're but you're you're not wrong in terms of 
you know, changing that that image in terms of getting away from that. And I, I think they're still, they're still struggling with that, right? Because the vast majority of their core customers are still those people, you mm-hmm. know, are still the blue collar, the blue collar folks. But aren't they struggling just like the automotive industry, the, all the automotive manufacturers have for the last 30 or 40 years? I think. I mean, it's the same, right? I, I think, mean, you're, you're struggling yeah. with the image. Uh, I think the think difference. Right it's, it's the same with the cars. trucks. It's the same with the trucks right now. Look at the prices of trucks. Yep. Yeah, trucks what, Trucks was for the working blue collar man. Yeah. And now they cost $80,000 and up for, yep. you know, some of the top of the line ones. That's because people they don't need a truck, buy a truck. Right. 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 Exactly. Well, they well, do it, have a lot of stuff in it, though, too. Like, we're talking about technology. Vehicles aren't just a truck to use out in the field and use as a workhorse. They have all kinds of shit in it now. Yeah, my, mine is actually set up truly because my center console is, like, has a flat, a, like, a flat pad on the top, and there's a plug-in. It's set up to, like, drive it out into a farm field, plug in your laptop, and run your drone and do, all, you know, all your stuff from right mm-hmm. there to do your evaluation of your field right in your right from the inside of your truck. You know, and, and mine's not super integrated with technology, but you could do all that from inside of my truck and never have to get outside of it. So, you know, it's it's an interesting it's an interesting situation, though, because I think that, you know, I think the cultural thing that, that AI didn't hit for me was culturally how we view motorcycling in the United States versus how the rest of the world view, views a motorcycle. The rest of the world sees a motorcycle more as a utilitarian device than a luxury device or a device for adventure like we do, right? We don't look at a motorcycle and see that motherfucker is going to hold five of my family members and all of our groceries for the next week, right? Where there are places in this world that actually that view them as being able to do that very thing. And we do, we do not view them that way. And you know what's interesting to go back to Dustin's comment about you know the how bikes used to be a blue collar thing. If you're in Asia or I don't know, pick a country right where mm-hmm. motorcycles are a huge part of their their transportation. There are a lot of grease monkeys out there, man. People working on their bikes, they're you know tearing stuff down. They're putting. I mean, you see it everywhere. You don't see that in the U.S. anymore. It kind of like I said, I think it's mirroring kind of what's happened in the automotive industry. Because Ryan, you know, when you and I were young, muscle cars were were the thing, right? And everybody could work on their own car. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, you can't do that anymore, right? I had a very yeah. yeah one of my first cars was a seventy eight Malibu, very analog. Yeah. I mean, it didn't even had it didn't even have a working radio in it, to be honest. And I, I don't want to offend anybody out there by saying you can't work on a car. You can work on a car, but right back in the day, everybody worked on their. They made cars. it easy. Right. You could pop the hood, you know? and you had access to everything yeah. without having to take five other parts out yeah right you didn't have electronics in them and technology in them the way you do now right yep 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 you could change your oil you could get your oil filter you could change your tires change your brakes change an exhaust i mean that was stuff that that your basic home mechanic could do on their own car that most people did do dave's not wrong there yeah you know i was dave do you let me ask you this though about motorcycles too, because you specifically mentioned, you know, like an Asian country, for instance. Do you think that we've also shaped motorcycles in the United States specifically based on our free travel over a gigantic landmass that we have? Yeah, I mean, I think that's that has something to do with it. But I think the the market in the U.S. Uh, well, first first off. The fact that we have to travel so far, right, to go everywhere, everybody goes to cars, right? Because right. you want comfort, you want to carry shit, everything else. Right. Um, if you, you know, if you go to Asia, you go to Europe or whatever, the, you know, the distances traveled are much smaller, right? Uh, roads are smaller, right? Bikes make a lot of, a lot of sense, Um you know, well, think about think so about your here. trip, your trip, or or Dustin's trip, or or Brittany's trip out to FDBM this year, right? So yours is what 1,600, 1,700 miles, Dave. Eight, eighteen hundred miles. Eighteen hundred miles. Okay, so take that same eighteen hundred miles and and put you in the UK. How many countries are you going to tr- cross in eighteen hundred miles? Ten, probably ten at least. Three, four. 
you know, depending on what direction you go. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, 1,800 miles is only going to get you halfway across the United States. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the fact that we have the, the distance we travel shapes all of our transportation differently than, right. than like smaller countries. But right. Uh, anyway, we got two more things here. We got to uh, move along. Economic factors. Kind of been talking about that. Economic considerations such as student loan debt, job market challenges may impact purchasing decisions of younger individuals. I would say that's regardless of age. Those things impact people. Um, so I don't know. I don't know if we need to beat beat economic factors to death. And then again, the last point, technology and innovation. You know, HD has been working to incorporate new technologies and in innovation, but younger consumers are drawn to brands that are perceived more cutting edge. And I think this is really where Harley fucked up. You know, I they years ago should have been forward leaning on what was emerging on vehicles with technology. And they just, I think they, they waited too late and now they're, they're playing makeup and that cost them a huge chunk of the market. Well, okay. So you're saying it cost them a huge chunk of the market, but yet Harley is by leaps and bounds above the number two. Mm -hmm. They sell more motorcycles than any other company by far. I mean, do you could they, take the do they when you aggregate. You could take the all difference the between, lines. You could take the difference between Harley and number two, and that difference is still is still more than what number two sells. Just think of how much more they they could uh, have grown it had they been keeping up to date. It, it might. It may very well. It may very well be possible. But it's it's. They're still they still hold the 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 greatest portion of the but market. It's, but it's funny you say that because I mean everybody's been saying on YouTube for 15 years Harley Davidson is going out of business. The, well, they're, yeah, they're saying that, that they're that. saying that know. because they're they're coming off of the boom of motorcycles, right? That's what that's what's going on, right? In the early 2000s, you had to put down a $500 payment or $500 down payment on a Harley, and they would call you when said Harley got there, and if it wasn't the color that you wanted they would sell that bike to the next person on the list and you'd go down to the bottom. And that $500 that you put down was non-refundable. So you had that, there was a boom in motorcycling happening where you put your name on a list. And when you got that bike, you were so fucking excited because you got a Harley Davidson. Right. And so there's never been a time in the history of the, of, of the corporation like that. And, and so they went from this peak to selling less than the peak. And so it's always looked like they're, they're suffering, right? When really they, they hit a pinnacle that they had never seen before they hit a peak. Right. And, and now they're in a bit of a, of a valley of that. And they feel like they're going out of business, which well, maybe, maybe we business. should, the next question we should ask chat GPT is its opinion of uh, Harley's business plan over the last 20 years. See what it says. Hmm. Anyway, we've got, I don't know, 10 minutes here. What do you guys think? Is Do you agree with what the AI was saying? You think it's valid, semi-valid, semi-flaccid? <laughs> Which, uh, <laughs> well, we know you're, nothing. <laughs> we know you're completely flaccid, Dave. Ah, uh, B. Everything's downhill after retirement. Brittany, day. you're the, the, the closest thing we have to young and hip. What do you think? I mean, I feel like I already shared my thoughts. Like, no, I mean, just about the whole, the whole. Th how how would you sum up how GPD GPT did? I mean, I think it did okay. It hit on all the all the variables that you would look at. It hit on stuff that matters to me. Yeah, but didn't you buy a Harley, Brittany, because it's badass? I bought a Harley because it it's badass. So let me say it. just say it. Brittany. It is badass. See, I mean, it is. It just is. You wouldn't feel nearly as badass if you were on a Yamaha <laughs> S right now. Probably not. I don't know. Right. Because you know, what it's going to sound like when you ride by. It's going to sound like this, Brittany. Yamaha. <laughs> When I was younger, 
I feel like Harley was the brand that you always heard about, and it it struck me as like a premium brand. And then when I actually looked into getting a motorcycle, I was ruined by the fact that you can do all these different customizations. You can get different colors. You can get the bike that you want when you buy a Harley. I mean, I looked at other brands, and you just none can't of them were badass. That. Yeah, I mean, you, you, you could. I suppose you could go and like get it painted or do the different, you know, different things. But the fact that you can customize it and you can get exactly what you're what you want—that's what sold me. When you run out, of, when you if you would have run out of gas on a Yamaha at that lady's house and you'd have gotten off your bike and parked it and walked up there, she probably would have offered you tea and crumpets. Probably. <laughs> Right, but you walked up there with your loud ass bike that stalled at the end of her it's driveway. Not even loud. With your <laughs> with your leather vest on, and in your you know your hair and your 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 earrings all twisted. Switchblade earrings, <laughs> like coming out of your coming out of your ears. You know, all red faced from being on your bike in the hot, sweaty Kentucky swass heat. And she's like, "I don't want any part of this." Go back That's, where you came she from. Probably would have invited right. me in. Well, I'm out. Yeah, like I said, if you'd have if pulled on up scooter, on your Yamaha, it'd be a different story too. She probably wouldn't have even spoken to me. So, mm. you'd have pulled up on that Yamaha, like I said, she'd offered you tea and crumpets, or your Ducati and tight leathers. Chat there you go. GPT. I thought that was an interesting exercise. It, it, it was is interesting. interesting. It's it's interesting to me that you do have to be so specific with it when you ask questions. End of the day. I like hearing from people instead. <laughs> I mean, you're you're still hearing from people because the computer is compiling data that it's finding online that people. No, I want to hear people's voices. There. I want to hear voices. Not. I'm sure it can talk to you. That's creepy. <laughs> <laughs> you could have Siri read that to you. I want to have yeah. Chat. Z I want to have Chat GPT read that to me, uh, like Crocodile Dundee. That'd be fantastic. I want Samuel Jackson. I can Jackson. get on board with that. Or, yeah. I wonder if you could tell it to use dialects. That would be interesting. Ask it a question and tell it to reply as Samuel L. Jackson. <laughs> Please reply, reply as Samuel L. Jackson. That. Reply as Jeff Bridges as the dude. These Harley Davidsons are too expensive, <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> that would be a way better answer. cheeseburger. Yeah, there's something about AI that it makes you think you can just put this generic question out there and that it's smart. And in your mind, you're like, oh, this should be smart enough to just know what I'm trying to get at. But but that's what that's not. what's really scary. It's because you start to realize that the information you get back when you're asking humans a question is filtered. Mm -hmm. And how do you trust what they're saying? Yeah, there's a lot of bullshit on the Internet. You know? I mean, yep. people are a lot of times people are replying, giving you answers based on their experience and their interpretation and their values and their principles. Good old chat. GPT is just kind of laying it out there based on the data. It's like Wikipedia. Yeah. Yep. So next time somebody tells you, so next time Jared proposes an idea to you, you need to go ask chat GPT if that's a good <laughs> idea or not. Well, if it's coming from Jared, we already know it's a bad <laughs> idea. <laughs> if it's directions, yes. <laughs> if it's That's diameter of your next peg, then uh. no. <laughs> That's always a surprise. That's the next topic for uh. Chat GPT. All right. Well, that's Chat GPT. Next episode, we're going to have uh, our good friends from the Iron Horse Inn coming in. And what are we going to talk about, Ryan? We are going to talk about FDBM 2024. Nice. The schedule of events. The new design of our t-shirt has been posted on the interwebs. Get out there and take a look at it. Follow us on our Instagram. If you uh, so incline, you would have gotten an early peek of that shirt on our Patreon. So if you feel like uh, what we're doing is aligns with uh, with who you are and what and, and you like and you want to support Five Dirty Bikers, you can always join our Patreon. You can find link to our Patreon, uh, www.fivedirtybikers.com. But 
Yeah. So we'll be having uh, Greg and Andy on for sure. I'm not sure if uh, um, anyone else will be joining them. Yeah, I don't know if not. Frank's Frank. going to join us or not. Hopefully yeah, Frank does. But we've right. had I've had a couple of people that have asked me. Um, that's why you know we're really pushing the schedule out and said, hey, we want to know, you know, what are we going to do? Where are we going for like the ride and everything? Because a lot of people are going out there for a week, week and a half, or whatever, and they want to kind of schedule their rides and the sites they want to see based on what we're going to do. So right. our goal is to have the itineraries posted. Um, when does, when does our 12 February episode hit the street? Like the 19th, 19th 18th, 18th or 19th. Yeah. yeah. So by then we should be talking about it uh, mm-hmm. on the podcast. And then hopefully we'll have information published on the website. So you'll be able to go and, and see all the stuff that we have planned. And I'm excited. I know we're, we're going to unveil or reveal some of this stuff, but I'm, I'm super excited. Yeah. I can't wait to go. Mm -hmm. Got a little taste of some riding on Saturday and I'm thirsty for more. I, uh, I'm having, it occurred to me just the other day. I have, I have mixed feelings about this because while I'm very, very excited I don't want to be too overly excited. I need to put something in front of FDBM 24 that I can look forward to so that I don't, I don't look, so I don't wish my whole summer away. Are you, are you coming to see me? Mm. I, I don't know. Finally? No, I, we're going west. I'm going west. I'm going to Texas. We're, uh, no, we're going to Colorado and Montana, I think. We're going to try. Uh, we haven't made any plans yet, but a right. couple long weekends. I know we're going to do Beartooth and over a long weekend. And Oh, nice. Yeah, I'm going to see Beartooth March 10th. Is that a band? Nice. Oh yeah, Beartooth it's is a band. Nice. Beartooth. Yeah, that's that's the music we had for our bike reveal. Well, I'm going to go to oh, okay. Texas, and I'm stopping in Tennessee on my way to get that fucking out of date head unit in my road glide shit canned and replaced with something modern that works with my shit. We'll be posting our itinerary. We'll be posting the plans. We'll be posting the event schedule. Everything will be out there. Um, I will say this, there's going to be probably some things that may uh, get adjusted in terms of what would be available while we're there, um, but not, not, you know, the hard schedule at least will be out for everybody. Um, we could probably, you know, also say that if you're planning to go out there prior to or afterwards, plan your technical rides during that time. Yeah. Plan yeah. your very te- most technical rides during that time. We won't be doing any extraordinarily technical rides in, in a large FDBM group. Well, so. we can't, I mean, we can't hit everything in essentially a day and a half, right? No. We've got a riding time. So, no, but we will have the, the highlights that we're going to hit. So you'll be able to see that. Um, and I don't know, we may have a couple of surprises to unveil as well. I don't, I don't know where we are in discussions yet, but could Maybe have a, you know. Maybe some not. cool Maybe stuff. So. Pretty okay. cool stuff. If right. y'all are curious about coming or not, you guys can go to the FD, FDBM page on 5DirtyBikers.com. There is a video on there of the Iron Horse featured on a local news station. So you can see some images, video of, you know, the I-Bar and the hotel. So if you're still trying to make up your mind, that's a good source to go to. All right, everybody, get out there. Join Patreon if you're so inclined. Check out the website. Make your reservations. Tell Andy the five degree biker sent you. Make sure you're telling them when you make your reservations that you're going for FDBM. There are room rates connected yep. to this event. Yep. yep. And book now. Don't be sorry later. It's going to be a good time. And if you think there's a question we should ask chat GPT, let us know in the Discord. I got one. Will Tony ride to Sturgis? Oh. I think he's going to. I don't know. The data set's from 2022. <laughs> if that's the case, it's going to come back and say, are you kidding? He didn't write yeah. any fucking wear. Yeah, exactly. Was so exactly. that the year of concrete dust? <coughs> that, that may have been. Was it? It may, may have, have been. been. Maybe. May have been. Yeah. yeah. All right. Was that 21? Oh, okay. I think it was 21. Okay. All right. Thank you, everyone, for joining us on the Five Dirty Bikers podcast. From, <laughs> from the casting from the couch. Cast, casting couch. <laughs> <laughs> they had to make an appearance. Come on. They had to. Yeah. The the virtual casting couch, if you will. Yes. I'm going to put that as my, my virtual background, a green screen to shit out of my head. Um, there you go. <laughs> it's only two and a half inches. 
<laughs> <laughs> and on that note, keep it dirty. <laughs> <laughs>